people act when they come out here. I don't care where you're from. And uh, we've got a bit of damage on the man. I love Y62 Patrol! I've got E85, not diesel. Classic example of how you can be singing, laughing one minute, and the next minute, shit can turn south, especially when you go off the beaten track. He was before yeah. we got there, he was stuffed. G'day guys, welcome back to another episode. We have just driven all the way up from Arnhem Land, right down to the central desert, over two days. We've done 2,000 kilometers. Today, we're heading into a special camp called Rainbow Valley Campsite and we're going to show you guys around. Rightio, we just dropped the tyres down on the van. A bit of corrugated road heading out here. We're in the desert, so we've got to be careful. There's not too many people around and it's hot as buggery, but tomorrow we are hitting a massive shortcut road. Uh, I'm not going to tell you too much about it because it's going to be pretty hectic, but it's going to save us a couple hours. And that's heading out to Kings Canyon, Uluru, the Olgas, all that good stuff. So today we're going to head out here, see Rainbow Cliffs, and then tomorrow that is the plan. We can't wait to do the central part of Australia. Should be a good episode. So jump in, let's hit this truck, and uh, fingers crossed we make it to camp. Corrugation pressures because we've got to do a heap more driving tomorrow, and this is only 20 k's in, so we have dropped our tyres. But really, I'm thinking I should have probably dropped them a little bit more because it's pretty severely corrugated. So, anyway, check it out. There's obviously a little bit of water around here, there's a bit of greenery, and uh, yeah, I cannot wait to get there and maybe crack a beer because yeah, this track's getting a bit long in the tooth for me. We made it so. We finally got here. It took us about probably 20 minutes to do that 20Ks. Pretty slow going really, but uh, check this out. Absolutely stunning. Never seen anything like it, but you can see there's been a fair bit of erosion um, on the actual bit of rock itself, but there's probably like three different colors at least. I wouldn't yeah. say there's eight colors in the rainbow. There's probably it's three. It's nearly 500 meters high. So pretty. Yeah. What? It's 500 meters high? Yeah, right on the map. I don't know about that. Well, let's debate this later, but it so does not look 500 meters high. Meters. Yeah, so maybe exactly. elevation. That means it's above sea level, oh. not 500 meters sheer cliff face. But anyway, still pretty big. Sarah's right, it's huge. Massive. I couldn't kick a footy up it, so. Not right. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, so, we made it. Check this joint out. It's absolutely magical. So, that's the rainbow cliffs just there. And uh, there's campsites all the way around here, but we have jagged the best spot. Sarah's just banged the drone up. So we've just come down to watch the sunset. The sun's just beaming onto the cliffs. It looks pretty special, but yeah. You wouldn't want to be like a diva with fake eyelashes around here. Right? That'd be peeling off and heading that way, I reckon. But the wind's pretty strong. It's like Hurricane Sandy over here. But yeah, this is just wicked to see. And we're sitting on the ground cross-legged, just no seed or anything. It's that good. And it's getting colder in the desert, eh? Like it was real hot up at 
up Arnhem Land, a desert, but this is spectacular. You definitely got to come down and see it. for dinner tonight. Steak sandwiches, our favourite. Yeah. How's the view but? Absolutely insane. We just watched the sickest sunset. Honestly, that was next level. Now, there's some chips here. I just better make sure they're not poisonous, eh? They're the steaks. A few scotch fillets. Medium rare on the barbie. And then we're off to bed. So we'll see you guys in the morning. And uh, we got a rip snorting track to do tomorrow. So bright and early, we're waking up. We're gonna hit this track. Hopefully it goes all right. People have been telling us how bad the corrugations are. So we've just done East Arnhem. So fingers crossed we, we know what we're doing, but something tells me we have no idea what we're doing. We have just dropped our new merch. We've got a few different designs. They're all available on our website, so it'd be really appreciated if you go over and buy some stuff, support us, get some sick merch, and yeah, thanks heaps for the support, and uh, hope you enjoy the video. All right, so we just made it out of that joint, and uh, we've got a bit of damage on the van. One of my mud flaps that I've tech screwed on is, uh, has come off, so it's meant to look like this one here, but she's not. How you going, mate? <laughs> oh shit, I'm so scared of these things. A bit of damage. Okay. Got a bit of damage, the mud flap come off. Oh shit. <laughs> Have a look at the emus on the other side. So I'm just tech screwing it back up into the bash plates. This van's got bash plates all under it. So... I love this part of the van. There's literally nothing that can get damaged. Bash plated from the chassis up. All right, so I fixed that little mud flap <laughs> issue, but there's like a busload of tourists here. And this chick, well chick, this lady from Germany come up to me and she said, oh, like nice caravan and stuff. And I'm not gonna put on a German accent, but it was thick German. Look and uh, look at it, they all taking photos of this truck. This poor truck he's just pulled up, eh? Hey. <laughs> The truck. Look, at him. look at them all. <laughs> They're all taking photos. They all got their cameras out. They've never seen a truck before. And the lady, um, the German lady, was walking up to the emus, and I said to her, "You be careful of them, mate. Eh? They'll peck your eyes out. Like they'll they'll literally rip your tonsils out for you." And she didn't she didn't know if I was kidding or not. <laughs> she was a bit worried, and she she stood like three meters back from the fence. But yeah, it's pretty mental. Eh? They were over at the caravan before taking photos of the caravan. I think they just don't see big things in. Germany or wherever they're from. I don't think they're all from Germany, but welcome to Australia guys. The land of where the big birds will peck your eyes out and big trucks and stuff. Look at them. They're all having a chat to the truckie now. They're just ready to peck out some tourist eyeballs. <laughs> Look at them. Evil looking things. They're so cute. They have no idea how dangerous them things are, eh? Poor truckie, eh? Look at this guy. He's just trying to do his job. <laughs> And all the tourists want to take photos of him. Imagine being grump, it's early morning too. Imagine <laughs> waking up, getting in your truck to do a big day's work, and there's just 50 tourists waving their cameras in your My face. My dad would actually tell them to piss off. I'd, <laughs> do, I'd love to watch that, eh? <laughs> oh, that's classic. Radio, we just got to the shortcut road. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm going to put it up on the screen down below, but pretty well. This will wipe off about an hour or two off your trip if you're coming to Kings Canyon from Alice Springs Way. So heading down, 
Uh, this, this will definitely be worth your while, but it's extremely corrugated and there's actually a sign saying people, they do not, do not recommend it. The tires down a little bit more because I think we're going to need to on this track. Big drought master. Good size haggots on it, eh? <laughs> so we're checking out the meteor crater. There's actually two meteorites that landed here. So talk about a bullseye. I mean, that thing would have been coming at thousands of kilometers an hour and it's created this big divot in the ground, but it is pretty interesting. And the uh, US, well, NASA actually come here one day and they were practicing for the moon landing. So they've used this crater as practice for the moon, which is pretty cool. But um, yeah, it's definitely pretty windy out here, but it's cool to see it. Definitely come in and have a look. Um, yeah, I've never seen a meteorite crater before. The things you see in the desert, and as you can see, there's nothing around, so you can yell out whatever you want. You can even say, I love Y62 patrols! Like something silly like that, you know? <laughs> anyway, let's go. Oh, well, that was something a bit different. We um, haven't seen something like that, but I reckon it's because us humans keep sending a few rockets, a few missiles up into space. I reckon it's just the aliens just retaliating, pegging one back down and yeah, seeing where it lands. And obviously it lands out here where there's absolutely nothing. But if that landed in like a town or a city or something, it'd do a fair bit of damage, eh? Just out in the desert, we're just picking stuff up on the side of the road. We've seen this muck mat, even though we're not affiliated or anything with muck mat, we thought we'd come pick it up because one, it's rubbish and two, clean me feet before I walk in the van. Hey? But um, Sarah's dad, we, we spoke about Kimbo before when we seen that big truck and he um, he actually sees a lot of stuff on the side of the road. He, he always stops and picks it up and he gets going from a trip up north. He's like, check it out. The other day he brings it I'll get it. I got a, um, oh, I found a red arc solar panel and he goes, it's putting out 13.1 amps. <laughs> Bolts, which is like broken. <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at that. Thanks to whoever left that behind. Look at that. Anyway, put it on. Wonder if I'll cop some tinia from it, eh? We'll see. That's going in the back of the car, though. Oh, well, we'll just chuck another Yui here, eh? No one coming. This one might be a bit hectic, eh? Meteorites, muck mats, what's next? <laughs> Moose knuckle on a camel? Rightio, this is a classic example of how you can be singing, laughing one minute, and the next minute, shit can turn south, especially when you go off the beaten track. So this poor bugger here staked both of his front tires at the same bloody time and blew the sideballs out. Fair dinkum, I haven't seen a blowout like this since I did a half marathon home from the pub in a thrashed out set of pluggers. To make matters worse, he was only carrying one spare, which is pretty common these days, and there was zero phone reception. He's been stuck in this very location for two days and between people not even stopping to help him, and no one carrying a sat phone, no one could do anything to help. We were wondering how the hell we could help this guy, but we did have a brainwave and thought to throw out the Elon Musk. And before you knew it, we were able to call him a tow truck. We called his insurance company and there you go, Bob's your uncle. He also twisted my arm to celebrate the huge win with a beer, which I obviously said no to. Anyway, so glad he could help this legend out. He's a bloke traveling Australia, he loves the outback. Uh, he's doing it solo with the company of his rifles and his trusty GU patrol. Doesn't get much more Aussie than that. All right, so we just had a little stopover. We were helping a guy on the side of the road. He did have a few people with him, but um, yeah, they needed a yeah. bit of extra help. No one could really <laughs> help him and no one had a sat phone or anything. He popped two tires. Um, and he had he actually, one spare. Yeah, so he staked them. So it wasn't just a normal pop where you can plug it, keep going, he like full ripped out his whole sidewall on both yeah. sides of the car. And he was only carrying one spare, which normally like we only carry one spare as well. Mm. Poor bugger, so unlucky. 
It's like the worst. Who ever? It was his two front tires. Like, how does that happen? Yeah. Anyway, so, so we got the Starlink out. We called his um, insurance and we called the tow truck and stuff. And he's going to get picked up tomorrow. So he's going to camp there tonight. He's got plenty of water and food. But yeah. while we were there, there was actually people that just ripped past and like didn't even do. And nah, like, didn't even his, slow down. He's so, got his bonnet up to stop people. You know, like there's nothing to wrong with draw his engine. Attention. But. No one was stopping, so then he put his bonnet up to make people stop and see if he's all right. Because he he was before yeah. we got there, he was stuffed. There's no service, nothing out here. And so it's a remote. It's so. really important that if you are driving out on these roads in remote Australia, even if you don't completely stop as you're coming up, slow just down, like just this. thumbs up, or thumbs down, up, up and or down, just you know? check with them to see if they're okay. Because yeah, it can turn into a really ugly situation out here. And if you didn't have enough water, food, yeah, yeah it could have been really bad. So it's really important just to check on people, make sure they're all good. And yeah. what comes around goes around. Yeah, no, so what goes around comes around. <laughs> he's, yeah, so pretty much he's gonna pass it forward. But yeah. it really, it really grinds my gears how people act when they come out here. I don't care where you're from, if you're from the city, from the country, whatever, everyone should be the same. If you see someone on the side of the road on a gravel track, no reception out in the middle of Australia, literally no shade, dead center of nothing. Australia, just by himself, you stop and you ask him if he's all right, or at least flick him one of these, and then he will either go, or she will either go thumbs up or thumbs down. Thumbs down, stop straight away. That's, that's how it should be, you know? It is safe and everyone needs to help each other out here and just, Pisses me off the amount of cars <laughs> and he I've was seen like just the ripping nicest past. guy ever. He was still in such good spirits despite like yeah. he camped out there last night and then he's gonna camp there again tonight. Yeah. But yeah. So anyway, that's anyway. that's our little, <laughs> our little story. Lecture. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was it was a good dude and they're coming for him, so we're all good. But like I said, we did make sure he had water and food and beer. So yeah. we made sure he had all those three essentials, so he's alright. Morning. What are, what are we doing? <laughs> We're going for a sunset hike at Kings Canyon. Sun, sunrise. Oh yeah, sunrise. It's definitely the thing to do because all of the tour buses are here. <laughs> yeah, we thought we we're going to be the only ones here, but last night we stayed at the. There's like a big four or discovery or whatever it is, like five k's from here. So we stayed there last night. We're pretty wrecked after yesterday. Um, we heard that guy um, is going to get picked up today, the one that we helped. So that's good news. And we are going to explore one of the gems of Australia. Now this is located smack bang in the middle of Australia. Yeah. Literally in the desert and uh, yeah, feels good to be here but fingers crossed we can get a good shot of this place. Um, something tells me this is going to be a pretty special little walk. Oh, we're on the walk. <laughs> we're going to start it. We're just about at the steps. This is a 6k return loop and it takes around three to four hours. So. And we're already puffing. <laughs> but we're going to do the rim so we're going to do just a quick rim here. <laughs> So yeah, three to four hour roomy, which is a big one, but um, check it out. That's where we're going up there. We'll walk around that. Apparently this starts 500 steps. Yeah, hectic. <laughs> but um, we made it before sunrise, so that's a little win in itself. No, I think sunrise is very big. <laughs> nah, because there's cliffs, you can't see the sun yet. Anyway, check it out. See people walking up there. Oh, since we got to the NT, I got pretty good at drinking beer. I'm not very good at hiking because <laughs> you don't walk very far in the NT, you just drive. But this walk is hectic, look at this. It's like straight up. Far out. Hello Liza, how do you do? I'm writing you a letter. I hope it reaches you. I know it's been a long time you heard from me I'm still kicking around here in Tennessee I heard you got a new place I heard you got a new job I heard you got a haircut and it looks real nice are you ever lonely do you ever think of me I heard you got a new how good is this? We just made it to the edge. This is like a sheer cliff face, and this place is absolutely unreal. I couldn't imagine what the Grand Canyon looks like. This is probably Australia's version, I'd say. And uh, yeah, it's a sick view, and definitely doing it on sunrise. Do it in the cool of the day because this joint would get hot as buggery, hot as sin out here. But anyway, sick to see the rock formations. What was rock formations has now fallen away. I'm actually on the edge of the cliff right now. Uh, feels good to be a bit of um, 
bit of blood rushing through my body because let me tell you, we are not fit at the moment. So that walk's probably right. reminds us a lot of the bungle bungles in WA up near Kadnara there like just the way it's formed and stuff the only difference being this is like real high up on a cliff where bungle bungles literally go down to the sand um, but you can tell it's the same formations it's the same way it's been formed once upon a time this would have all been underwater and these used to be ancient sand dunes that's what all the signs are telling us so it makes a lot of sense but it's so windy and I feel like Harry McClary up here eh, from Donaldson Dairy Rightio, we just got to bloody the campground at Uluru. We still haven't really seen the rock. We saw it in the distance. It is a beast of a rock. And we haven't even seen the whole thing yet. We could just see it peaking up above the sand dunes. Yeah, so we're keen as mustard to see it. We've just got to the caravan park and let me tell you, she's busy and we didn't know what to expect. And then turn right. We didn't know what to expect because like, you're in the middle of the desert, so we don't know what's out here. And uh, there's a fair bit of stuff out here. It's pretty commercialized. It's not really our style, but we've got to see the rock. That's our main objective we figured, here. Like we may as well just because we got to the rest stop that we're going to stay at tonight, and it was just like on the side of the road. So we're like, stuff it. Let's just go in, try and get another night, and then at least tomorrow we can wake up and just be fresh and like go yeah. out and do what we need to do. So, what? How much is this per night in here? It was like over fifty dollars a night. Yeah. I think it was fifty for unpowered and then fifty-two for powered. So we're like, oh, we may as well get power. Yeah. So we got power, and we're we're nestled 21, in amongst everyone. What are we? 121. Oh, yeah. That's 120. Oh, we must be just there then, next to the walkie way. Oh, that's such a cute caravan. We can see the rock. <laughs> it is freaking huge. Like, it's bigger than you expect, eh? Especially. Yeah, we're still like 13 k's away from it. Yeah. Can't even imagine when we're standing next to it. It's yeah. so surreal. But I actually like being away from it because you can actually see the whole rock yeah, where if you're up close you oh, can only you see know, you've seen it up close, have you? no well I, we haven't seen it yet but but i feel like <laughs> it's super impressive from far away like even 100 k's away well probably not 100 probably 50 k's away you can see it well you can start to see the top of it because of the curvature of the earth but yeah it's amazing and you can see the lines that the water's created over the years of water flowing off it and to see it in in, in full rain would be pretty special but yeah, Unfortunately, today, no rain yeah, the only day you want rain is when you're at Uluru, but unfortunately, it's going to be clear skies and a high chance of hiring some bikes and trekking <laughs> around this thing. So, anyway, we'll show you a bit about this joint. Um, yeah. Hopefully, cycle around it goes to plan, and uh, yeah, check this out. It's insane. Watch it come into view here. Holy mackerel. All right, so to get into Uluru, it's not your standard parks park.
that's not going to happen. So yeah, pretty well. It's cost us what 100 and 140 for the bike. Plus 76. So <laughs> we're looking at 210 dollars just to come see the rock and ride and around it. Stay at Airs Rock Campground. That was 52 and a half. So which is expensive, but it's 250 rude. bucks we've already spent today, and we <laughs> well, we haven't even done anything. And tonight we've got something super special planned. Like Sarah said, it's all the So you got to do it. Like yeah, you're this not. This one was fast. Yeah. So you got to spend the money here, enjoy it. But tonight we are doing the sounds of silence. So, yeah, so we have a dinner under the stars. It's a, I think it's a three course meal. Um, didgeridoo performance. You watch the sun go down over the rock, and we'll have like champagne and yeah, it's gonna be pretty. Cool. Sounds magic to me, <laughs> but um, and we've... we go through the field of lights and stuff, and that was something I really wanted to do. So. Yeah, so we'll show you guys all that. We'll show you what we're doing today. We'll try to bring you along for a lot of it. We probably won't film too much of the meal tonight because we want to really enjoy it, soak date it all night. in. <laughs> yeah, date night, very expensive date <laughs> night. That was three hundred bucks per person. Yeah. So it's bulk money being spent out here, but how hard is it to get out here and, and you've got to sort of soak it up and suck the guts out of it while you're here so anyway and we didn't do anything for our four years we're, we're driving up to Allenham land so it's our four year anniversary tonight yeah so we're <laughs> celebrating at Uluru what a, what a spot to uh to spend it but check this out it's just magic seeing this thing sorry for chin wagging a bit too much but I was just saying to Sarah I was like we're looking at a rock right yet I'm so amped I'm like amped to see this rock like I'm just pumped and then I was like I feel like crying and then of course Keelan gets the freaking camera out but well, like it's I'd... such a weird thing like why does it why do we feel these emotions yeah in you? like it's, it's just a rock but it's so significant and it's hard you can't fat it's like hard to fathom if you've never seen it and it's hard to put into words it's very obscure and you have to come out and see this thing and this feel what the we're same feeling feeling I got when we did the Great Barrier Reef though yeah that just that emotional like wow. it's just significance i think <laughs> it's the significance of it so anyway everyone says when you come to all of Roo, it's not about the place it's about the feeling and exactly yeah it definitely is how sick is this we got some bikes <laughs> and we're cycling around the biggest rock in Southern Hemisphere, well, maybe even the world, I don't know, but the flies are just stickier than Pooh Bear's fingers, eh? Well, I was taking the piss out of all the tourists and they're finding it. No, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, all the blow-ins have got fly nets and um, I guess we're blow-ins as well, but, you know, we don't have fly nets, do we? There's a few radical little jumps on this track, look at this. How's this boggy section? You... Quick, go! <laughs> Oh, lock, lock the diff locks. Quick! I'm getting bogged. Come on. Get it going. Oh, I'm, I'm powering past. I don't think it does it justice, eh? We're in a cave here. We're just coming around all the way. There's little stops along the way. But this one's got a bit of a story behind it. This is where the young men used to come. And before they were men, they would train. And they it's called the Najita phase. I'm not saying it right. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but pretty well. It's like the white man, the white man's version is kids moving out of house when they become parents and adults. But here, you know, they come live in a cave by themselves and they have to learn to hunt. They have to learn to do all these different things before they actually go back to the clan. Um, where they're initiated as men. We were just saying like it's probably well worth getting bikes like it is expensive but like we keep seeing people walking around and no one's got smiles on their faces so yeah definitely get bikes it's a, it's a cool way to see Uluru eh? What do you reckon Sarah? Definitely get the bikes. <laughs> definitely get the bikes and you get a cool red helmet that goes super fast and you get to look like a bit of a speed demon for the day eh? Every little corner of the rock looks different, so it's not like it's boring, you see. Hey? Sarah reckons she's a speed demon. That's nothing. That's nothing. You should see what I got. You should see what I got in my bloody tank. I got an E85. Not diesel. Come here. Fuck, I'm gonna go. I was way faster. Tricks I want to show you guys. So I swear to God, if you break that bike and we have to walk you. back, 
So I'll show you my first trick. This is called the knack knack. Oh. No footer. Wow. No hand up. No footer or hand up. Oh, <laughs> now I used to be in the Krusty Demons. Eh? I used to be radical like that. I used to be a pro motocross rider in the Krusty Demons. So I know all these tricks from them. But um, yeah, it's pretty sick, eh? Yeah, plank smells. It smells like um, Baker's Delight. Yeah. Maybe someone just but, touched oven dust. Yuck. <laughs> Radio, Sarah's all dolled up. <laughs> I'm definitely not. Look at that head. That's <laughs> shocking. We're going to the sound of silence dinner. So this is that 300 bucker. So we're gonna bring a um a phone camera. Um, a phone camera. Yeah, we're gonna bring a phone camera and we're gonna show you what 300 bucks get you out here in the outback. Should be yeah. good. Should be good food. Well, you better hope it is. But um, bit of a special night. So anyway, we'll try to show as much as we can. All right, we're 26 champagnes deep. Now we've got to go eat some, <laughs> go eat some food. <laughs> All up, I think we spent about four days in this area, but to be honest with you, it's probably not long enough. We definitely wish we stayed longer and next time we will 100% stay longer and we got to go out and see the Olgas and we even shared a little sunset at the rock itself and just soaked it all in because it is a long way to come out here. So when you're out here, you've really got to suck the guts out of it. Rightio, last night's dinner was a cracker. We definitely woke up a little bit dusty, but we've come out to check all the route. A lot of people don't know you can actually drive around the whole rock. It's a little bit further away than the bike and the walking track, but you can still see it all which is pretty sick, but um, yeah, I thought I'd share that. And this road pretty much goes right up to it. So if this doesn't put it in scale, I don't know what does, but got a bit of a funny joke for you is we're looking at takeaway food because we're feeling a little bit dusty and we found a joint called Air's Walk <laughs> and they do noodles and stuff. So when we didn't get that, don't worry, but yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. That is a fully solar powered car. And they're obviously testing it out here near the most iconic rock in Australia. Well, it's actually moving without anyone. Look at that. That is sick. That concludes this trip. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. We've got all the route to ourselves right now. There's literally not a soul here. Literally, this car park is packed throughout the day. And before I let you go, they used to climb it right here on this part. I don't know if you can still see that. You can still see the track that sort of went up. It gets real skinny at the top. It looks scary as. I'd actually shit myself if I was climbing today. But uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. This is a ma massive bucket list for us. It's not as exciting as our usual ones where we go on real off-road and break and stuff. And, yeah, but it was something we needed to do and yeah, it feels so good to see this place. So iconic and we just can't believe we've ticked it off now. So off to Melbourne. We are picking up our new van. We're getting a build done. Um, so you guys are going to have to wait and see for that one. We're testing out some brand new stuff. Cannot wait to show you that. I'm um, very excited about that one. So we're heading that way now and uh, I guess we'll see you guys in Melbourne. Thanks for watching Legends. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all that jazz. It all helps us out. It's the easiest way to support us and keep us on the road doing what we do for longer. So thank you, and we'll see you next time. I see all over the internet they're saying their caravan company is the best. Now I'm here to show you why I think Urban is the best. <laughs>